Hi, this is Heidi from My Reading Life, and I'm here today to talk about my top favorite fiction reads of 2019. So, like my nonfiction favorites for the year, these are in no particular order. These are just the 10 uh, books that I thought were my most favorite for 2019, and I wanted to share them with you. Um, like my nonfiction, I'm going to try not to talk about them very much because I have talked about them a great deal in previous videos during the year. So let's just get right to it. The very first book I wanna talk about as a favorite is A Place For Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. I read this book for the BookTube Prize contest in 2019. It was my favorite of the BookTube Prize books that I read. It is an amazing story of a Muslim American family, um, you know, and how they deal with each other. We get uh, the story told from the perspective of different members of the family, and it's just a beautiful family drama story that just blew me away. I thought it was just lovely and heartwarming and made me cry at the end. So what more can you ask for in a family drama than that? The next book uh, that I thought was fabulous was Lucky Boy by Shanti Sekaram. This is a book that I read with Doris at Aldi Books um, earlier, this, earlier this year. It is the story of a young woman who um, comes to America from Mexico. Um, she, when she arrives in California, I think it's California. Yeah, when she arrives in California, she is pregnant. And um, she is trying to uh, make her way in the United States as an undocumented immigrant with a baby. Um, we have a parallel storyline of, of an Indian American family. Uh, the husband is in tech and the, the wife is a chef and they very much would like to have children but they are struggling to get pregnant. So these two storylines are happening and then of course intertwine at a certain point in the story. I thought this was really wonderful look at um, narratives that you don't often see um, and characters that you don't often see in this type of a narrative. Um, I think the way that these characters lives intertwine was really well done. Um, it just was it just was such a touching story again. I really, really loved it. Um, if you like, if you like books that, uh, talk about immigration or talk about, um, talk about, uh, families who are struggling with, uh, how they fit into the culture, I think this is a great book. There are some, uh, parts of the storyline that might be, uh, might be triggering for some folks so I will just put that out there there is some sexual violence and of course fertility issues so just know that going in but it is a beautiful story um the next book I want to talk about is my favorite science fiction book of the year and that's All Systems Read by Martha Wells I listened to this novella on audiobook and it is the first book in the Murderbot series and it so it tells the story of a murder bot who basically is a um, an artificial intelligence being whose sole purpose is to provide security um, under contract. And uh, this murder bot finds himself on a planet trying to protect uh, a group of research scientists who are on a planet determining if there's... Uh, what materials might be there that might be useful like mining or whatever and so his job is to protect this group of researchers and things go bad <laughs> and he has to deal with it and he has to deal with the fact that he looks human but he's not at all human and so humans tend to react to him in different ways because of that and so he's dealing with that as well it is an amazing story it was super great on audio um, I think if you like sort of character driven but filled with action science fiction stories, you would like the Murderbot series. Um, I think they're delightful. And All Systems Red was my favorite sci fi from 2019. The next book is my favorite romance from 2019, and that's Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. 
This is another book that I listened to on audio. This is a um, romance about <laughs> set in a fictional United States between um, the first son of the first woman US president and one of the royal princes from England. And it is a um, sort of, they don't like each other in the beginning and then they're forced to pretend to be friends on social media for PR reasons and then of course they fall in love. And the romance was very endearing and funny and I really like the way that the story touches on political um, issues that are currently happening in the US and but gives a lot of hope and optimism for those political issues and I also liked the way that the story was told with all of these young all of the young people in the story are sort of in their 20s and it read very realistic realistically to me that the way that these 20 something folks behaved seemed realistic um, for how 20 year olds would behave. Uh, it's a lot of sarcasm and sarcastic humor, which I love. And I just thought it was delightful, super fun to listen to on audiobook, the best romance that I read all year. The next book um, I wanna talk about is my, uh, my favorite uh, YA book of the year and also uh, my favorite book written in verse of the year. And that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I actually, um, had this book out from the library so I don't have a copy of it um, but it's all about a young lady a teenager who's trying to deal with the fact that she um, is growing up in a Latin American family her folks are very strict um, but she is trying to of course live her teenage life with interest in boys and all that sort of thing all the things that go along with that and um, she and her mom have a very um, difficult relationship at this stage in their lives. And I thought it was beautifully written. Elizabeth Acevedo is well known for her beautiful writing. Um, and it the book is just, oh, it, it makes you feel so many emotions. And if you're like me, if you're the mother of a teenage girl, it it really will strike you hard. Not only with your relationship with your own daughter, but your relationship with your mom. Um, I thought it was really well done and a beautiful story. The next book I want to talk about is the book that surprised me the most. It was my surprisingly uh, turned out to be one of my favorite reads of the year and that's A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. Uh, I didn't know, I had to read this book for again for the Booktube Prize. It didn't sound like a premise that I would be interested in. It's all about an author or a man who wants to be an author, but he's not very talented. And so the way that he becomes a famous writer is he basically steals the life stories of people that he meets and then writes them into novels. Um, so he's not a very nice person and he basically just uses people throughout the whole course of the book. Um, but it's one of those stories that's told where the main character's life sort of encompasses a lot of history and the time period. And so you're getting to meet um, sort of famous people or interwoven into the storyline. And yet you're always just trying to figure out when this guy's going to get his comeuppance, right? I could not put the book down. It kept me turning the pages. Um, I was... I wanted to know what was going to happen to this guy, even though I found him despicable. And I just thought John Boyne did that really well. I know this is a controversial book. A lot of people hated it. I just thought it was a gripping good page turner of a read. The next book I want to shout out is a book by an author that I loved um, last year as well. And her book, uh, Women Talking, made it to my top 10 list last year. This year, All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves made it to my top reads of 2019. I took this book out from the library, so I don't have a copy, but it's basically the story of two sisters from Canada. One of the sisters suffers from mental illness and has uh, made multiple suicide attempts. The other, and this that sister is also a famous uh, pianist. I believe she's a pianist. She's a famous musician, um, but I think it was piano. And her sister, um, who is not talented in music, or she doesn't think she's talented in any other way, but 
the sister who's not musical, I can't obviously can't remember the characters' names at this point. Um, just is trying to keep her her mentally ill sister alive. Uh, basically, she's trying to keep her from committing suicide. And the relationship between the sisters, the relationship that they have with each other and that they have with other members of the family is very well done. It's very uh, emotional story. It's a very beautiful story. Miriam Taves can write. I just think Miriam Taves writes characters so well. She makes me feel so emotional in her stories that I just... I, I just can't put them down. And I just absolutely loved All My Puny Sorrows. The next book that I want to shout out is a manga. Um, and might be the first manga I ever read. I believe it is. Um, and that is My Brother's Husband by Gengora Tagami. Tagami. Um, and this tells the story of a Japanese man who is raising his daughter by himself. And so this is the Japanese dad and this is the daughter. And then all of a sudden this man shows up on their doorstep. He's come for a visit and he is the Japanese man's brother's husband. Um, the brother has passed away and this man is Canadian and he's never met, uh, he's never met our main character. Um, again, can't remember name. Yachi is a work at home suburban dad and then this brother-in-law is Mike and Mike shows up on the doorstep and he's like hi I'm your brother's husband and I want to get to know you and your daughter because now that um, the brother has died you're my family and I'm missing him and I need to get close to his family this is such a great story the daughter whose name is um, Kana is so great she's really precocious and loving and just she's super thrilled to think that she's got an uncle she didn't know anything about and she just wants to get to know him um but uh yachi is having a hard time dealing with um this because he had a hard time dealing with the fact that his brother is was gay so he's really struggling to deal with this guy just showing up on his doorstep and what's he gonna do with him. So really great um, family story and dealing with aspects of your family that maybe you're not comfortable with and how you or you do or you don't deal with that. And in the meantime, not only does he have to deal with his un being uncomfortable with this, he also is trying to deal with the grief of losing his brother, which he hadn't really dealt with previously. I thought this was fantastic. I definitely want to read volume two. This is volume one. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, it, it has made me want to read more manga. The next book uh, is the longest book that I read. Um, well, no, I can't say that because I reread The Stand by Stephen King, which I think is longer than this. But this is right up there. <laughs> this is Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Ellman which I have talked about a ton, so I'm not gonna go into very much. Obviously, this is um, a new release that this fall that is a um, thousand page stream of consciousness uh, from the perspective of a suburban Ohio housewife as she goes about her day. Um, she's a stay at home mom, she has a home baking business, and she is dealing with a teenage daughter and um, younger children as well and um, the state of the world this is current day America so she's dealing with all of her anxieties and fears about our culture um, and it's just brilliant it is so brilliant and I even though this book is enormous and I was scared of stream of consciousness it just sucked me in. I loved it. I related so much to the um, Lucy, uh, the woman, the housewife's, her train of thought and the way that she sees the world. I just related so much to it. This book is funny. It's sad. It's surprising. Um, it just gives you all the emotions. Uh, and I think it is well worth your time to give this a try. I mean, maybe it won't be for you. I didn't think it would be for me, but I absolutely loved it, and it was one of the best books I read all year. I actually would really like to reread this book. I would like to listen to it on audio, but I don't even know if it's available on audio. I haven't been able to find it yet. 
Um, but I definitely plan to reread this because every time I hear somebody talk about it, it makes me want to sit down and pick it up. So I can't, you know, what else can you say positively about a book than that? And then the last book I want to talk about as a favorite for 2019 is a book that's a reread for me. Um, but I loved it just as much, if not more, the second time around. And that is Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout. This is a book of interconnecting short stories that all take place in a small main village um, and somehow relate to our main character, Olive Kittredge. She's either the main character in the story or she's somehow peripherally involved in the story. Um, so we, she's interwoven through all of these short stories. And it's just wonderful. It's about um, Olive Kittredge is an el you know is an aging woman, and it's about how uh, aging influences how we live in the world and how people see us. It is a book about how we connect with each other or don't connect with each other. It's a book about family and children and parent relationships. Um, it's a book about how you choose to live your life and whether or not you are the kind of person that reaches out to grab happiness no matter what or you're the kind of person that um, is more uh, or less likely to tip the apple cart um, and is more likely to value the routines and the um, the safety of what you have always known. Um, I thought this was absolutely beautiful the first time that I read it. I thought it was absolutely beautiful the second time I read it. I actually listened to it on audiobook this time around and I can't wait to read the sequel all of again in 2020. So those are my favorite fiction books of 2019. Um, I hope that you also had some great fiction reads in 2019. Um, I look forward to uh, hearing about them in the comments down below and I will talk to you later.